let's add in the player and its movement script. This usually, if you're working in Scratch or even if you're working in something like Unity, would take you multiple days. You're gonna add in the sprite, you're gonna add in all the animations, you're gonna add in all of the code, you're gonna check, you're gonna find out that you typed capital A instead of lowercase a. It's gonna take you a long time, but we can do it really quickly because Construct has some behaviors built in automatically inside of the system here. So we're going to, in our layout, I'm going to right click and choose insert new object. This is going to insert a new game object. Now we choose what type of game object we're going to insert. Well, we're gonna insert a sprite. So I can just start typing because I'm looking for a sprite and it automatically searches for it. Then I'm just going to double click on the sprite. This is now on the cursor. We've seen that the cursor has changed to this, this plus sign. The sprite has not been added to the game. Now the game is asking us, where would you like to add this sprite? I am going to add mine to kind of the middle section of my screen, but you can put yours wherever you want. Once we click in, the sprite gets added to the scene, and now we get to add in the artwork. So, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and rename this animation from animation one to say idle, I-D-L-E. This is going to be the idle animation. This is the animation of the player just kind of standing there and not doing anything. Now we're gonna go ahead and add in our art. So in the folder of RPG assets, there's a lot going on in here. We're gonna walk through this stuff as we use it instead of just like dumping everything in here, but there's a lot going on. Let's go ahead and go into actor. Actor are all of the things in your game, like players, like non-playable characters, NPCs, all of the characters. Then we're gonna go into the actual character section and we're gonna choose our character. I want to play as, hmm, who do I want to play as? Um, what about this Red Ninja? No, I don't like the look of that one. How about Red Ninja 2? Ooh, okay, I like this one a lot more. I'm gonna then go into the separate anim folder and this has all of the individual animations broken out. And I'm gonna grab this idle animation and just drag it into my scene here. That, that didn't work. That, that grabbed the entire thing. That's not what I wanted. Okay, so let's go ahead and delete that frame. Actually, we'll just drag in a new set. <clears throat> and instead of dragging it into the drawing box, I'm gonna drag it into the um, animation cycles. Then I can import from Sprite Strip. This has four horizontal cells and one vertical cell. Then if I look at the actual artwork, I can see that the cells go horizontally, four distinct shapes, and vertically there's just a single row, so that is good to go. Set up just the way we want it, and we want to replace the entire animation because I want to delete that first animation frame. Okay. Then I'm gonna go ahead and crop this down so that the hitbox is just where the artwork is. Now I have this animation here that has it facing forward, then backward, then left, then right. I actually just want that first cell, the first frame here. So I'm gonna delete the other three by just clicking on them and hitting the delete key. Now I just have the idle animation facing forward. And this for me is totally fine. When I'm not moving, the character is just gonna face back towards the camera, back towards the player. I'm totally fine with that. And then I'm gonna go ahead and close the sprite editor there. I'm gonna go ahead and make sure I am logged in to make sure everything is saved. That will pop up every once in a while if you haven't connected to the internet in a second. And now I have my player right here on the screen. It's hard to see, we're gonna fix that in some scripting. But first, let's go ahead and add a behavior to it. We're gonna add movement. So add new behavior, and I am looking for eight direction movement. This allows me to move up and down, left and right, and in all of the diagonals. So I'm gonna go ahead and double click on that to add that in, and that is the only behavior that I'm going to add right now because I want to customize this behavior. I want these things to be slightly different than the defaults. So this set angle, I'm gonna go ahead and change that to no. I don't want it to rotate. I want it to stay flat and just move. If it rotates, that might work for some games, but for this game that we're building, this top-down game, I don't want that. We're gonna set the max speed to 100. We're gonna make it move a little bit slower than it was before. 
The acceleration, we're gonna set it to 10,000. We're gonna set it to as large of a number as it will take so that the acceleration is instantaneous. And we're gonna say the same thing for the deceleration. We want the movement to feel snappy. It stops moving when we stop moving, it starts moving when we start moving. And there's no like slowing down or speeding up or anything like that. Default controls, we're gonna also uncheck this. We're gonna put in our own custom arrows. We're not gonna use the arrow keys because we're gonna be using the mouse. So our right hand is not gonna be on the arrow keys, our right hand is gonna be on the mouse, which means our left hand has to do the movement and our left hand naturally rests on W, A, S, and D, and that's where we want it. We want it on WASDA, so that's what we're gonna change our movement to in a second. Now I'm gonna go ahead and double click on my sprite here, or sorry, just single click on my sprite and I'm gonna rename it to player. Awesome, now I'm going to double click on it to open up my game here, or open up my sprite, which looks great. It's zoomed in now, which is fine. In my animations, I'm going to right click and add animation. I'm gonna call this walking down. This is the animation for the character walking down the screen. Now what I need to do is add in the actual sprite sheet that we have for this animation. So the individual animations, I'm gonna grab this walk animation and drag it in. Import from sprite strip, and this is a four by four animation because it is four by four individual images. And then import, we're gonna replace the entire animation and we can kind of go through here and we can see that it's walking. Well, this is the walking down animation, so I only need the first four frames of this animation. Frame zero, one, two, and three. So I'm gonna delete all of the other frames. So delete, 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 and delete. Okay, so now we have this walking down animation. I'm gonna do the same thing for all of the other directions of movement, walking up, walking left, and walking right. And make sure you select the, same, the, the four frames that match the direction of the name of the animation. This walking down animation would make no sense if my player is facing to the right. So go ahead and get all those animations added in, and then we'll come back. All right, I have all of my animations in here. I have my idle animation, my walking down, my walking right, my walking left, and my walking up animation. Looking good. Now we can hit play and we see absolutely nothing. First off, we see a tiny dot of a character and we don't have any sort of um, movement or anything in here. I hit the arrows, ooh, okay, so I have the arrow keys does some movement, which is awesome but it doesn't switch the animations, we're too far away, and the camera doesn't actually move with my player. So let's change a few of those things. First, let's add a behavior. That is the scroll to behavior. This scrolls the camera to the player. Awesome, now we're gonna start writing some events. So I'm gonna go to my event sheet here, and we're gonna add in some of the events that we need. So let's go ahead and add an event. Now the first thing that we wanna fix is that that camera is is pretty far away from the player. Now, if your camera is fine and you like the look of it, then you can skip this first event. My screen is just huge. If we actually go back and look at my, uh, my layout here, it is 4K, it is massive. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit to get that fixed. But if you have this 720p, you might not need to add this first event. So I'm gonna add a system event and I'm specifically looking for the start of the layout. So as soon as the game loads, as soon as the game starts, I wanna set something. So on start of layout, now I'm gonna go ahead and add an action. It is a system action here, and it is going to set the layout scale. So layout, oops, layout, and then we can scroll down to set layout angle, no, ah, set layout scale. I'm gonna set it from one, I'm gonna change that to three, and hit done. If your screen is a different size than mine, you can change this number. If you like the way your game looks, like if I hit play here, now I can see my player, I can see that I can move in the camera, oh no, I can't, can't move anymore. 
Oh, that's right. The default controls are turned off. Okay, let's add in that movement. So first things first, we need to, if we're not pressing anything, we snap back to the idle animation. So add event, keyboard, on any key released. This says as soon as we're not holding a key, as soon as we're not touching a key, do something. Well, we're gonna go into the player and set its animation. And then in these double quotes is the exact language that we use in the name of the animation. So it's called idle. All or spelled exactly the same way that you have it spelled in your um, player when you added in the animations and then hit done. So now if we release a key, we stop moving, the player snaps back to that idle animation. Now let's go ahead and add in uh, when we hit the W key, when we're moving up the screen. W is in that up arrow position. So we're gonna add event, keyboard. When a key is down, when a certain key is down, we're gonna go ahead and do the W key. That's the key that we're looking for. Done. And then what are we going to do? Well, we're gonna simulate some movement because we don't have to actually add a force or anything like that, because we already have that eight direction behavior, we already have all of that code written for us, we just need to kind of replace the up arrow with the W key. So we can go into the player and we can, in this eight direction, we can simulate control. And what control are we simulating? Well, we're simulating the up arrow pressed. Done, and this will do the same thing the up arrow would have done if we were still using the default controls, which we're not because we're pro gamers here, we use real controls. We're also gonna add another action to change the animation. So I can just search for animation. I'm gonna go ahead and set the animation and I'm going to, in between these double quotes, spell it the exact same way I spelled it when I was setting up the animation and it is set, said to be walking up. For me, I capitalized the W and the U, but make sure your capitalization is the same that you had when you set up that animation and hit done. Awesome, so we have this now. So now if I play my game and I hold down W, I go up. You can't see that I'm moving because of this is all just one gigantic gray box, but I am, see, we are going up the screen. Awesome, this is looking great now. I just have to get all of the other movement working. So I'm gonna take the same command, I'm gonna copy it, I'm going to paste it, and I am just going to change some things about it. One of those things is this W key is not the key that I'm looking for. I am now going to go with the S key because I'm going down. And then I'm no longer simulating pressing up, I'm simulating pressing down. And I am no longer walking up in my animation, I am walking down. Done. Okay, so now the S key makes me go down. You're gonna do the same thing for all of your, your movement directions. Go ahead and get all that in and you should have working movement. If you have any questions, let us know. We would be happy to help you out.